and welcome to our double entry bookkeeping using T accounts part one which is the second module in our bookkeeping basics course I am Kathy Grosskurt and I am your facilitator for this module here on this slide is an overview of today's lesson for the first few business transactions that we will be doing we will work strictly with the balance sheet accounts as stated in our previous lesson in the introductory module in a double entry bookkeeping system two or more accounts are affected each business transaction will include two or more offsetting entries that should balance as we go through these exercises we will use T accounts to demonstrate the concepts of double entry bookkeeping. When entered correctly, you should see how the accounts remain in balance as per the accounting equation. Now we revisit the accounting equation. Remember from our previous lesson that the accounting equation is the foundation of a sound double entry bookkeeping system. The basic accounting equation states that assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity, as you see here. With each transaction recorded into our bookkeeping records, everything must remain in balance. Remember, we also stated that these accounts make up the items on the balance sheet. Again, as stated previously, we will be working strictly with the balance sheet accounts in this module. Again, when entered correctly, you should see how the accounts remain in balance as per the accounting equation. Now we get into a definition of what a T account is. A T account is just that. It's an account resembling the letter T. The account name is written above the horizontal line of the T, while data is recorded on either side of the vertical line according to these rules at right. For asset accounts, increases are recorded on the left, and asset accounts have a normal debit balance. For liabilities and owner's equity, increases are recorded on the right, and liabilities and owner's equity accounts have a normal credit balance. Here below on the slide is the accounting equation combined with these rules, and on the next slide, we get into the rules of debit and credit. Now we get into the rules of debit and credit. As stated on the previous slide, asset accounts have a normal debit balance, whereas liabilities and owner's equity accounts have normal credit balances. In our double entry bookkeeping system, debit simply means left and credit simply means right, as depicted on our screen here. This rule holds true in all circumstances, Regardless of whether an account has a normal debit or credit balance, debit will always mean left, credit will always mean right. Please try not to read too much into it. Just remember that debit simply means left and credit simply means right. When you follow these rules for recording business transaction data, your accounts will remain in balance. As we go through the transactions in this module, we're going to use the following steps to record the data in the T accounts. The first step is to identify which accounts are affected. In a double entry bookkeeping system, remember that two or more accounts are affected in a transaction. For the purposes of these exercises, we're only going to be working with two accounts per transaction. The second step is to identify the account types for each asset, liabilities, owner's equity, and later on revenues or expenses, and note if they increase or decrease. For some accounts, you may have both increase. For some accounts, you may have one increase, one decrease. And then for some accounts, you may have both decrease. You'll see as we go through the exercises. Number three, the next thing you do after that is determine which account is debited, which account is credited, and the amounts for each. When you're only working with two accounts, if you debit one account, you have to credit the other. That's the way it works. You'll see when we do the exercises, it'll make sense. And finally, number four, 
You record the data on the proper side of the T accounts as appropriate. On our next slide, we start with transaction one. Now we get into the hands-on component of our module, starting with transaction one, where we actually record a cash investment into the business. We are going to set up a new business operating as a sole proprietorship, the simplest business structure. To establish the books for this new business, which we're going to call Bookkeeping Clean and Simple, our first transaction is to record Sarah Jennings' withdrawal of $20,000 from her personal savings account on November 1st, 20XX, and depositing the monies into a new business checking account, which we're going to name Cash, to set up for our new business. We will set up an owner's equity account for Sarah Jennings called Sarah Jennings Capital. We will break down each transaction by the steps listed on the previous slide and in your handout. Ready? Let's get to it. In this slide, we're actually going to go through the first three steps to record a cash investment for transaction one. For ready reference, you're going to want to have the first page of the handout for this module as well as the chart of accounts page in the introductory module. Now, step one, which accounts are affected? If you read through the synopsis, you'll notice that we've identified cash and Sarah Jennings Capital as the two accounts affected. Moving along to step two, what are the account types and do they increase or decrease? If you look at your chart of accounts, you'll see that cash is an asset type. You will also see that capital is an owner's equity type. If you put cash into a company, it's going to increase. If you increase your owner's equity in a company, it's also going to increase. So both the cash asset type is going to increase and the owner's equity capital is going to increase. Okay, number three which account is debited, which account is credited, and how much for each. Remember the rules for debit and credit. If you enter information in a double entry bookkeeping system, one account is debited, the other account is credited. Cash will be debited for $20,000. Sarah Jennings Capital will be credited for $20,000. Remember, assets are recorded on the debit side, if you increase the account, and owner's equity accounts are credited when you want to increase the account. Both accounts are increased, so cash will be debited for $20,000. Sarah Jennings Capital will be credited for $20,000. This will make sense as we go through the actual recording of the transaction on the next slide. So hang in with us. We're getting ready to do that shortly. And now we're ready for step four where we actually record transaction one. First, we're going to record the $20,000 on the debit side of the cash T account. We were going to include the date and the amount. And for now, we're going to include the plus sign above and the word debit below. This is until you get used to knowing where everything goes. We're going to next record the $20,000 on the credit side of the Sarah Jennings Capital T account. We're going to record the date, the amount, the plus above, and the word credit below. Now, as you can see on the slide, we're going to show you as we go that the accounts are in balance per the accounting equation. And as you can see, they are. We have $20,000 in cash and we have $20,000 in owner's equity. Both accounts remain in balance. Now we're ready for transaction two where we actually record a cash purchase of equipment. On November 5th, 20XX, Bookkeeping Clean and Simple issues check 1001 for $1,000 to purchase a desktop computer and laser printer from Micro Center. Note that for simplicity, we will treat computer and printer as one account, but in actual practice, we would break these items out into two separate accounts. On the next slide, we go through the first three steps to record this transaction. 
On this slide, we're going to actually go through the first three steps to record a cash purchase of equipment for transaction two. Please refer to the other handouts as needed. For step one, which accounts are affected? The two accounts are affected are computer and printer as we're treating as one account and cash. Number two, what are the account types and do they increase or decrease? If you refer to your chart of accounts, you'll see that cash and computer and printer are all asset accounts. When you are dealing with the same type of account, one is going to increase and the other one's going to decrease. When you have a cash outlay, that means it's going to decrease. When you acquire an asset, it's going to increase. Therefore, the computer and printer account will increase by a thousand and the cash account will decrease by a thousand. Number three, which account is debited, which account is credited, and how much for each? Remember when you're working with two accounts, one will be debited and the other one will be credited. Since we're working with two asset accounts, increases on the asset account will appear on the debit or left side and decreases for an asset account will appear on the right or credit side. Therefore, an increase in the computer and printer account will appear as a debit for $1,000 and a decrease in cash asset will appear on the right side as a credit for $1,000. On the next slide, we'll actually do the transaction. We will now actually record transaction two. First, we're going to record the $1,000 on the debit side of the computer and printer T account. Remember to include the date and the amount. And for now, we're going to continue to include the plus and the word debit. Next, we're going to record the $1,000 on the credit side of the cash T account. Remember, we are decreasing the amount of cash, so it's going to be recorded as a credit. We're still going to include the date. This time we're going to include the minus sign and the word credit underneath. As you can see below, the accounts are still in balance. We will talk about the impact of this transaction on our records in the next slide. Now let's talk about the impact of transaction two on our records. As you can see in the diagram here, the accounts are in balance as per the accounting equation. Basically, we've just had an exchange in assets. The net change in asset value is zero. We had a decrease in cash, which was offset by an increase of the computer and printer asset in the same amount. The owner's equity account, Sarah Jennings Capital, was not affected either, so it remains unchanged with a credit balance of $20,000. All in all, everything remains in balance. Hopefully, this all makes sense. Now on to transaction three. For transaction three, we're going to record a credit purchase of equipment. On November 10th, 20XX, the business purchases a laptop computer from Office Depot on credit for $500, payable in 30 days. When an item is purchased on credit, it means the business is liable or owes the money to a creditor, which is Office Depot. This transaction creates an accounts payable to Office Depot for $500. If bookkeeping clean and simple was to liquidate at this point, then Office Depot would have a legitimate claim of $500 against the business. We need to therefore capture this liability in recording this transaction. On the next slide, we will go through the first three steps in recording of this transaction. In this slide, we're going to cover the first three steps of recording the credit purchase of equipment for transaction three. Step one is to identify the accounts affected, which will be laptop, and we're going to call the second account accounts payable Office Depot. So the two accounts affected are laptop and accounts payable Office Depot. Number two, we have to identify the account types and do they increase or decrease. When you acquire an asset, the asset increases. 
For our laptop account, it's going to increase by $500. When you acquire a liability, it's also going to increase. So our accounts payable Office Depot account will also increase by $500. Number three, which account is debited, which account is credited, and how much for each. Our laptop will increase, so it will be debited for $500. Our accounts payable Office Depot account will also increase, so it will be credited for $500. On our next slide, we will actually record this transaction. Now we're ready for step four, recording transaction three. First, we're going to record $500 on the debit side of the laptop T account as shown here. Next, we're going to record $500 on the credit side of the accounts payable Office Depot T account, also as shown here. The next slide shows the accounts with current totals. Everything remains in balance, and we're also going to discuss the impact of transaction three on our records on the next slide. Now let's talk about the impact of transaction three on our records. As you can see, we had an increase in liabilities of $500. We've also had a corresponding increase in assets with our laptop purchase of $500. Our assets now equal $20,500. Our liabilities plus owner's equity now equal $20,500. Everything is still in balance as per the accounting equation. Now let's get ready to do transaction four. Now we are ready for our final transaction for this module. We are going to pay cash on an account. On November 30th, 20XX, we pay in full for our laptop purchase back in transaction three. When we pay off our account, we no longer have that liability on our books and we rid ourselves of claims from that company in the event our business liquidates or folds. On the next slide, we're going to cover the first three steps in recording this transaction. On this slide, we're going to tackle the first three steps for payment of cash on account for transaction four. First, we have to identify the accounts affected, which are cash and accounts payable Office Depot. We are paying cash on our account. Number two, we have to identify the account types and do they increase or decrease. Our cash account will decrease by $500 because we're paying off our liability. Accounts Payable Office Depot is our liability, and we pay it off, it will decrease by $500. Number three, which account is debited, which account is credited, and how much for each? When one account is debited, the other account is credited. For our Accounts Payable Office Depot account, decreases are recorded on the debit side, and so our Accounts Payable Office Depot will be debited for $500. For our cash account, when we outlay cash, the decrease is recorded on the credit side. So our cash account will be credited for $500. We will actually record this transaction on the next slide. And now we're ready for step four, recording transaction four. We're gonna start with recording the $500 on the debit side of the accounts payable Office Depot T account as shown here. Next, we're going to record the $500 on the credit side of the cash T account, also as shown here. The next slide shows the accounts with current totals, and the accounts remain in balance as per the accounting equation. The next slide will also show the impact of transaction four on our records. Here you can see the impact of transaction four on our records. As you can see, cash has decreased by $500. Liabilities have also decreased by $500. Our owner's equity account, Sarah Jennings Capital, remains unchanged with a balance of $20,000. We no longer have any liabilities since we paid off our liabilities in this transaction. Our assets total $20,000. 
and our owner's equity plus the zero amount for our liabilities equal twenty thousand dollars so as as you can see everything remains in balance as per the accounting equation Here's a quick exercise of preparing our balance sheet for the month ending November 30th, 20XX. Based on our T account balances in the previous slide, we can now put together a simple balance sheet for our first month of operations. Our most liquid assets which consists of cash or quickly convertible to cash are listed first followed by our least liquid assets. We then transfer our balances from our T accounts to the appropriate places in the balance sheet document, which will be shown on the next slide. Give yourself a couple of minutes before you go to the next slide to check your work. Note that if done properly, everything remains a balance according to the accounting equation. Here is the completed bookkeeping clean and simple balance sheet as of November 30th, 20XX. Your handout should resemble this diagram. For assets, we had cash totaling $18,500, computer and printer totaling $1,000, and laptop totaling $500. Total assets of $20,000. For liabilities and owner's equity, we have liabilities totaling zero, Sarah Jennings Capital totaling $20,000. For total liabilities and owner's equity of $20,000. Total assets of $20,000 equal total liabilities and owner's equity of $20,000. Note that everything is in balance. All the information was pulled from our T accounts. Congratulations, you've just completed Module 2, Double Entry Bookkeeping Using T Accounts Part 1. Following this module is Double Entry Bookkeeping Using T Accounts Part 2. Again, congratulations.